Okay, so the audio has changed once again, because, believe it or not, the garden shed gym thing is actually causing more problems than I imagined at first. So I'm returning to the one place I've always been for the oven reviews. My bed. Hello everyone, and welcome to a new series I'm starting called Yearly Games. This will basically be a review show where I review all the games that I played in 2020. And by that, I mean the games I played through the year of 2020 and all the games that came out in 2020, just to clear out some confusion. And so let's just sit back, enjoy the ride, and hopefully you play some of the games that I recommend to you. Okay, so I don't want it to seem like I hate this game, because really, I don't, but judging from its development and the games it was supposed to live up to, to me, The Last Guardian was... Disappointing. For those of you who don't know, let me explain. The Last Guardian was a game from the mind of Fumito Ueda, who was responsible for two games on the PS2, Eco and Shadow of the Colossus, which is widely regarded to be one of the greatest games of all time. Not to help that this game was in development hell for some time, and the bar being raised so high due to SOTC, but a general favourable score was really the best result that this game could have had. But enough with the game's development, let's talk about the actual game. The game is centred around a boy named... The boy, I guess, and a creature by the name of Truka, which is a monkey, bird, dog, cat thing. That's it, that's all you really need to know about the plot. They do puzzles together and they try to leave the place they're currently in. It's your typical boy and his hybrid of a creature story. Now, I don't think that this is a bad game. I'd say that it's mediocre at worst, so let me explain what I actually like about this game. As with the two previous games, the art style is what easily comes to mind in your memory. The flawed architecture and the lifelike textures are surely impressive, which makes this game beautiful to look at. The soundtrack to this game is godly in nature, and the orchestral sounds really help the game out in the musical department. <laughs> Okay, now let's get on to the negatives. My main gripe with this game is actually in Trico, or more specifically how to play with him. At times the gameplay is playable, and at times it is just atrocious, which doesn't really help it since the gameplay is so reliant on both of the characters working together. It's really annoying to constantly call into certain places and having to work with often janky AI. In fact, this got on my tits so much I actually covered the game and even completed it this year, as opposed to when I bought it last year. This was the same situation with the previous two games I reviewed, but this was the only one where I quit because I just wasn't having fun. So this is just me in editing, but what I was trying to say back there was actually uh, quit, just a clear out of confusion. So to me, The Last Guardian is a mixed bag of emotions. I love some things and I hate some others. Now I don't really give scores to these games, but if I did, then I wouldn't even know where to place it. Maybe a 5 or a 6 or a 7 on a good day for being like it. It's certainly middle of the road for me. However, this did lead on some great things in terms of the previous games, as about a year later we got the Shadow of the Colossus remake, so at least that leaves us on a positive note to leave this video on.